Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in this video I'm going to show you how to downgrade your original iPhone 2G back to its original firmware, which is iPhone OS 1.0, the first firmware ever released. So, this is the quickest method that I have found, I've currently been uh, trying this on most of my iPhone 2Gs, I actually have two of them honestly, but uh, this only works on certain iPhones that released in a certain year. Now, you might want to make sure that you have the first iPhone, it was actually uh, the 4 gig model or the 8 gig model. None of the 16 gig models were ever running iPhone OS 1.0 originally, so just make sure your iPhone can support iPhone OS 1.0. So let's get started with the process. So what you're going to need to have is this little downgrade kit, I'll have a link down below in the description that you can download this from. You're also going to need uh, a Windows PC or a Mac running the latest version of iTunes. Also, you're going to need a Windows XP machine. Uh, and basically the reason we need to do that is because we're going to need to install an old version of iTunes, iTunes 7.5, and uh, that will allow us to downgrade our iPhone to iPhone OS 1.0. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So, as you can see right here, I have a um, camera pointed at my iPhone, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put our iPhone into DFU mode. Now, in order to put our iPhone into DFU mode, you're just going to want to hold down the home and power button at the same time for about 10 seconds, and uh, once the shutdown prompt uh, comes up, just don't do anything, keep holding. Once your screen comes off, just let go of the power button and keep holding the home button. And what should happen if you have iTunes open, iTunes should just prompt you and tell you that your iPhone is in recovery mode. However, it is in DFU mode. Uh, I don't know why iTunes says that, as you can see, I iTunes actually um, just bouncing up and down, so just click OK. And what you need to do right here is if you're on a Windows PC, you just press Shift and click Restore iPhone. If you're on a Mac, however, you just press Alt and click Restore iPhone. So I'm on a Mac. I'm going to do that, and just click on this little th uh, this little uh, file for 3.1.3, and just click Open. Now, what this is going to do is just going to uh, basically upgrade your iPhone or restore your iPhone to 3.1.3, which is the uh, the current uh, highest firmware available for the device. From there, we're just going to unlock the baseband, and then we will be able to downgrade to iPhone OS 1.0. So anyway, I'm just going to let this complete, and I'll be back once this is done. Alright then guys, so once your iPhone has been restored to 3.1.3, you're going to receive this message that says, We're sorry, we're unable to continue your activation at this time. Basically what this means is you're not able to activate your iPhone because there's no valid SIM card in it to activate it with. Uh, also, Apple's servers for this one uh, are actually down, so you can't really activate it legitimately. Anyway, so what we're going to do is close out of iTunes, we're going to go back into the downgrade kit, and there's a folder called Red Snow. You're just going to open up Red Snow, I have the Mac version over here. Fire up Red Snow, just by uh, double clicking. And it's going to open up this thing. Now it's uh, going to have a browse button here. So you're going to need to browse to the 3.1.2, um, actually, <laughs> IPSW. The reason you need to do that is because 3.1.3 IPSW is not actually supported for some reason. So yeah, um, 3.1.2 IPSW should work. So just click next. It's going to go through all this jailbreak data stuff. Uh, just uh, patching RAM disk and stuff like that. And then when you should receive this screen. So just uncheck install Cydia and check unlock. Then you should click next, and you're gonna have to select the bootloader files. Of course, I have basically, uh, you know, I've got everything for you guys inside the zip file. Um, so yeah, 3.9 uh, bootloader, and we're also gonna go in to here and also select the 4.6 bootloader. Click next, and uh, basically now you're gonna need to put your device back into DFU mode. Now we've done this once already. Just basically hold down the power and home button for 10 seconds. Once your screen turns off, just make sure you just keep holding the home button. You might also want to press next on Red Snow. <laughs> and yeah, it's just going to detect the DFU mode once your device is in DFU mode and it's going to start patching the RAM disk. Alright, so after uh, the first stage has been done, actually the second stage, it's going to be stuck at waiting for reboot. So you're going to need to take out the 30 pin dock connector from your device and plug it back in. And once you've done that, it's just going to upload the third stage, and then it's going to reboot your device, and everything should be fine. Then the rest of the stuff actually happens on your device. So after Red Snow has done all this stuff, you'll see this little pineapple guy on your device, and it's just going to flash the NOR, and basically unlock the baseband, and uh, I'm going to wait until that finishes. Now after your device is restarted, uh, you'll see that your device is going through an unlocking stage right now. Make sure you don't power off your device, otherwise you can damage the baseband. Uh, and it looks like that was a pretty quick baseband flash. Usually it takes about two minutes. If it takes more than two minutes, just make sure you be patient. Let it do its thing. Don't power off your device. And make sure if your device has a, a bad battery or your device uh, is on, uh, low on battery, make sure it's plugged in so everything can finish without being interrupted. 
All right, so after Redstone has done all its magic, you'll see that your device is actually usable on 3.1.3 with an unlocked, uh, uh, actually, baseband, so you can use any SIM card. I'm using a T-Mobile SIM card. And this is pretty crucial since AT&T has stopped supporting this phone. You can use this phone on T-Mobile, and it's perfectly usable. I've actually tried to use this phone for a week now, and uh, it's, it's working very well. So anyway, without further ado, now we have to go back onto our Windows XP machine, and from there, we can downgrade this to iOS 1.0. All right, then, so once you're on your Windows XP machine, make sure to transfer the downgrade kit to this machine, or the Windows XP machine, and you're gonna go into the iTunes folder, and make sure you install iTunes 7.5 right here. I have a bundled the installer. What you're also going to need is iLiberty, which is gonna be inside the iLiberty Plus folder. Just to run this setup, it's 1.3. And that's all the stuff you're pretty much gonna need for downgrading. So, first of all, you're gonna open up iTunes, and iTunes is what we're gonna use to downgrade, of course. Uh, and uh, iTunes sometimes crashes. Uh, and you'll see that iPhone can't be used, um, which, is, which is what it says. But what we're gonna need to do in order to make this iPhone be usable on this iTunes version is we're gonna need to put our iPhone in DFU mode again. So hold down the power and home button for about 10 seconds. And once uh, the screen goes off, just let go of the power button and just keep holding down the home button. And wait until iTunes prompts you to tell you that your iPhone is actually in recovery mode. However, of course, recovery mode is not what the device is in. It's actually in DFU mode, but iTunes was programmed that way. So anyway, you see uh, iTunes has detected iPhone in recovery mode. You must restore this iPhone before it can be used with iTunes. Click OK. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Uh, since this is a Windows PC, we're going to press Shift and click Restore. And we're gonna need to do the iOS 1.0, or iPhone OS 1.0 firmware, just click open. Now, at this point, this is where the Red Snow step kind of comes in uh, to be crucial. So pretty much, iPhone OS 1.0 has a different baseband than iPhone OS 3.1.3, obviously. And if we didn't use the Red Snow to uh, unlock our 3.1.3 baseband, we wouldn't have been able to use iPhone OS 1.0 because it would have flashed, but the baseband wouldn't have flashed, and basically we wouldn't be able to call or text on our iPhone. Anyway, I'm going to wait until this is finished, and I'll be back when that's done. Alright then, guys, so once the restore process is complete, you'll see your iPhone is on uh, an invalid SIM, or incorrect SIM screen. And uh, this one says on iTunes that uh, the SIM card is not valid. Anyway, so pretty much, we're just going to close out of iTunes at this point. And what we need to do in order to basically be uh, able to go to the home screen of our device is we need to activate it. So. Uh, this process is pretty simple, but uh, it does take some time, so we're going to go into the start menu, and we're going to go into the computer, uh, or my computer, go into the local drive, or local C drive, program files, and go into iLiberty. Also go into the payloads, we're going to go into the downgrade kit now, and uh, open up the folder that says iLiberty, activate iOS 1.0 payload, just drag these files into the iLiberty folder right here, and then just close out and start up iLiberty. So, once the iLiberty uh, program starts up, we're gonna go into the Advanced tab. Under the Local tab right here, you're just gonna check off this, which says activate iOS 1.0 to 1.01. .01. Click Go For It. So at this point, all you need to do is uh, disconnect your iPhone from your computer, and then plug it back in. Once you've done that, just click OK on iLiberty, and it's gonna boot your device into recovery mode. When you see your device go into recovery mode with the little uh, exclamation point and you see booting round disk right here, go into the other tools tab and click jump out of recovery mode. It's going to kick your device out of recovery mode and boot it up into iOS and uh, you're going to see a bunch of verbose booting um, kind of like text. Just make sure you don't shut down your device while this is working and uh, I'll be back once this is booted up. Okay, so once your device is booted up, we're just going to exit out of iLiberty. And you'll see on your device, it still says incorrect SIM, but this time we can actually unlock our device. And here it is, we have iOS 1.0. So if we go into the settings, and I'm gonna go into general and about, you'll be able to see that we're on version 1.0. As you can see, that, that basically indicates that we're on iPhone OS 1.0 now. Now, we still can't use our SIM card to call or text, so we're gonna go through the final stretch, which is gonna be unlocking the device. Now, as you may or may not know, recently AT&T stopped supporting uh, the 2G network, which this iPhone uses. So basically, you can't use this iPhone on their network. So we're going to need to unlock it. And I'm going to use T-Mobile since they have a good edge connection. So before we can actually unlock it, we're going to install uh, a program called AnySIM through the program iBreaker. So we're going to quickly open up iBreaker in this folder. 
Now, um, we're gonna be pretty careful here, or, well, pretty quick, because what we need to do is we need to open up this program, and then we need to quickly click on one of the little, uh, links, uh, make sure you click on one of the top links. Pretty much, uh, we need to be able to, uh, open this program up and click on the links before it tries to connect to the website that doesn't exist. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second, so pretty much if we were to open it just like this, uh, it would just try to connect to this website, and uh, the website doesn't exist anymore. So, in order to bypass that, we're going to quickly click this, and then click, like, Files, quickly. And you'll see that the file manager opens, we can go back, and it will now not ask us to connect to the website. So pretty much, just click Applications right here, and click the Install PXL button. Make sure your iPhone is connected to the computer, and it's going to shuffle around some files. After that's done, we're just going to quickly restart our phone. Now make sure you don't force restart it, otherwise it's not going to work. So hold down the power button. Then slide the little red arrow, make sure your iPhone shuts it down and start it back up once that has shut down. iPhone OS uh, 1.0 is usually pretty quick to shut down and start up, so shouldn't take quite, uh, shouldn't take a long time. Once your iPhone has restarted, just click this continue button. Uh, it's going to shuffle around some more files. Now you need to shut down your device once again for the last time here, so just shut it down with the little red arrow. Wait until it shuts down, which is like five seconds literally, and then start your device back up. Once your device has started back up, just click check for PXL. Now once you reach this page, you're just going to click install from PXL file, click desktop, uh, your iPhone OS, downgrade kit, any sim, and just select any sim dash 1.01.pxl, click open, and it's just going to install the applications. Once it's installed, your iPhone will automatically restart. Uh, and once your iPhone is restarted, just unlock your iPhone, and you'll see a little app called any sim. Alright, so after you've gotten any sim installed, uh, basically we're done with our Windows XP machine, so you can shut it down or just put it away, uh, because we don't need it right now. Okay, so the next step is to actually go into settings, and you're gonna scroll down until you find general, and go into auto lock and make sure it is selected to never. Then you're gonna go into the AnySim app, uh, once AnySim app is loaded, just slide to unlock. Literally a different type of unlock. <laughs> and then click OK, unlock my phone at the bottom. Make sure you read through this stuff if you care. Um, honestly, I've read it too many times to really care at this point. But it's going to go through this little process. Now, this should take about 12 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. Sometimes it does take a little longer. And once it's done, I'll be back uh, and I'll show you guys what it has done. Now, after any sim is done working, you'll see one of two things. You'll either see an unlock failure that says the operation was succeeded, but the unlock commands failed. Uh, or you could see a success message. There's also a message that you could see for a complete failure, but usually that doesn't happen if you do all the steps in the correct order. Keep in mind, even if you get a failure, it doesn't matter. Of course, you know, it makes it look better if you have a success. Anyway, once we're done with that, we're going to go back into iBreaker and we're actually going to remove any sim. Okay, so we need our Windows XP machine for one more thing to remove the any sim app off of our device. So we're going to go into the iPhone OS 1.0 downgrade kit and we are going to go back into the iBreaker folder. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing where we have to quickly, quickly click on a link. So I'm gonna try doing that. Uh, files, okay, succeeded. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna click back. We're gonna go into the applications and you'll see that we have any sim here. Just click on this little icon here. Okay, and what's gonna happen is your iPhone is gonna soft reboot. Uh, you'll see in a few seconds, there you go. iPhone is soft rebooted, you can slide to unlock. And there you go, you have your iPhone fully working right now. So from this point on, you'll be able to call on your iPhone and basically use your iPhone as it was in the days where iPhone OS 1.0 was released. Also, as a side note, if you actually want to install the first version of Cydia, uh, you can use this one, this little check well, checkbox right here when you're unlocking, and this will just install Cydia. Now, keep in mind this is a very old version of Cydia, it's just for experimental purposes only, but if you do, you can install that. Uh, most peaks aren't even compatible with that, uh, but yeah, if you're interested, you could do that. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please leave a like because this video did take a long time to create. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and I'm out. I'll see you in the next one.